when we deal with algorithms, these are somewhat being mathematical in our heads and we can see the answer in our head just that you can see that that will be the sum of the two numbers so if the first number is as it was 13 if the first number is 13 and the second number is 6 you know that this is going to be 19 but when we're with the computer in pseudocode we must display the result so we could now say that the fifth one, remember we said termination, is stop. But the algorithm may have stop, but when we have pseudocode, we don't put in stop. We don't have to. Now remember what a pseudocode has as its main heart is an algorithm. And so we start in this way. We first of all look at the problem when we've looked at the problem we find an algorithm to solve the problem when we've got the algorithm we incorporate it embed it put it into surround it around with what we call pseudocode which is the design for the computer program that will follow as we progress the pseudocode looks more and more like the final computer program and we're going to finish with just looking at what that program will actually look like. Here we are in Visual Basic.net. We've set up a form and I'm going to draw onto the form certain components. What I want to do is get the first number and well one way to get a number is to use a text box. So I look down the list here and I find a text box and I drag it on to the form. There's a rich text box but we're looking for an ordinary text box. And there one is. So I draw it on. So that's the first number and we want another one. So I'm just going to copy that and paste it. There's the second one. So that's my first number, that's my second number. And I want to find the results. So I have a button on here. And what you're probably noticing is how the pseudocode, which actually is my solution, is morphing. It's morphing into something somehow different in the implementation. We're getting the first number, we're getting the second number. And when we click this, we're going to find what the result is and it's going to be displayed. So we need uh, to have something we can display now about a label. So I put the label here. And I'm just going to keep this very minimalist. So we want to get the number here, add it to the number there, and put the result in there. So if I double click on the button, we get the code handler, which is where we're going to write the code. And I don't need to create the first variable. Remember the first variable was first number? Well, in my pseudocode, that's what it was called, but here it's called text box one. So, and also my result is label one, it turns out. So I'm going to say label one dot text is equal to text box one, oh, box one dot text plus text box two dot text. Now we can't add strings which are actually in here so we actually need to make these values. So to do that we could write val in front of each of these as a function but I'm going to keep it even simpler. I'm going to keep it quite close to what we had with our pseudocode. I'm going to dimension that is set up a variable called fn and I'm going to have another one called sn and they're going to be integers whole numbers. I'm going to say that the first number fn is equal to text box 1 text and I'm going to say sn is equal to text box 2 text like so 
and then the result is going to equal Fn plus Sn. But this is not the result. Remember in my pseudocode I had a result also. So let's keep in harmony with the pseudocode and we have result or R here. And so I'm going to have R here is equal to Fn plus Sn. Now we've got our pseudocode actually mirrored in actual Visual Basic code. And I don't need to do this here. I can just say it's equal to R. Does it work? Well, let's run it and see. We put in 13 for the first one and we put in 6 for the second one number and then we click the button and we get 19. So the pseudocode that we had before is actually now in code form and runs the program. And I think it's good to stress here that we could have written this solution many different ways. We could have done it the way I first started but I've decided to keep it to the pseudocode that we had. That shows us that when someone asks you to design a program it's quite possible that the pseudocode you produce may be different to the pseudocode someone else produces and yet when the program is actually run much the same result is obtained. So pseudocode is the design language for a computer program and it is a vital step in modern programming. It could be you don't need it for trivial programs like this but for real programs ones that matter may be commercial you have to work in teams and people need to know that you're doing things properly. Another way to look at it is that if someone is ill or sick or busy on another project you can just pick up their pseudocode and write the module or a program. Or another way that you can write the program from someone else's pseudocode. And it's a fact that in computer programming the most highly paid programmers are actually those that design the programs. These are called systems analysts and they or the senior programmer are the ones who write the pseudocode and the most junior programmers are the ones that implement the pseudocode because it is actually easier to write the program from pseudocode than to write the program without it.